Okay, welcome everybody. This is CSIS 3020 Web Programming in Design. This is the third week, right? First video lecture. HTML tags that are available, what are the different attributes that you can uh, work on, etc., etc. Tonight we're going to be covering cascading style sheets. Okay? Cascading style sheets and HTML work hand in hand. What do you use HTML for? to provide content, right? HTML provides content. CS, CSS will actually allow you to provide um, styles, look and feel. So you have the content and the look and feel and you put them together and that's how your entire website should look like based on specific content and based on some specific style or look and feel. So how do you define the style, the look and feel for a website? Okay. Basically, this is the syntax. The syntax is going to be the name of the tag that you want to apply the style to. And then between open and close brackets, you're going to put a name value pair. These names are already predefined. And you're going to see that you can find all those pretty fine names in Eclipse. All you have to do is, and uh, let me pull up something that is much more simple. Um, you can actually do the control space. Remember the control space in Eclipse? In there, you will find all the different styles that are available for you, okay? I mean, we're talking about a couple hundred, probably, okay? All these different styles somehow affect the way that the tag is going to look like. So in this case, it's the name is background-color, and the value, which is separated, the name and the value are separated by a colon. The value is some kind of color, red, green, and blue combination, right? We already know that. It's a sexadecimal value. The first two are for the red, the second two are for the green, and uh, the last one are for the blue. And then if there's more than one name value pair, they will be separated by semicolons, sort of like C++, C, Java type of syntax, okay? So that's what a cascading style is. Okay. Now I suggest that you download the project that I'm going to be that is going to be available tonight, import it into Eclipse, and run it. Play with it. Also, if you have the time, go to CSS tutorial. This is an excellent tutorial. Remember, it has the try it yourself. So right now. We're looking at an example of a page that is using embedded style, okay? And we're going to see what that means later on. But basically, inside HTML, inside the header, we have added a tag called style. And the type, there are many styles, but this specific type is text, which means it can be re read as text, and is specific for CSS, okay? And then between the beginning style and the end style tag, you're going to put names of tags, body, h1, p. And each one will be defined with specific styles between the open and closed brackets. So what does that mean? It means that this, every tag in this HTML page that it's a body tag, will have a background color of whatever this color is. I prefer names. So let's call it light blue. Right? And then every tag that is going to be an H1 tag, a heading 1, will take the color orange and the text align center. As you can see, that's being applied here. Orange, center. And then every paragraph will have a font family of Times New Roman and a font size of 20. Actually, I'm going to change that to 
40. And I'm going to say, okay, edit and click. And here it is. Notice that that's a light blue, light blue background with an orange center heading with a 40 pixel font size paragraph. Now, what's the advantage of doing this? I mean, I could have done the same thing using um, specific attributes of the tag, right? Well, the really good thing about this, or doing it this way, is that typically in a page, you have a lot of headings, okay? And they're all over the place. One, two, three, for in this case I have six headings in my page okay and notice that all I have to do is change the style in one place dark blue and all the headings automatically will have the same style the same look and feel so I don't have to go and do each individual one now, think about a website which typically has 10, 15, 20 pages. I mean, the very simple website that you guys are going to be building by the end of the semester. It's going to have 20 pages. Imagine if you have to do this same thing, modifying each individual heading on all 20 pages, on all headings in each page. That's going to be a lot of work. As opposed to, let's have just a cascading style sheet file that will contain that specific H1 style and all I have to do is change it in one place and all my pages will have the same look and feel. Heading, dark blue, centered. Okay, And we're going to see all the different um, different ways of doing the styles. Okay, So I suggest that you go into W3 schools whenever you have some time and play with it. There's plenty of examples in there. We're going to go through some examples tonight as well. Any questions? Okay. So let's dive right into the... Um, yes. Oh, definitely. In fact, you can affect, is there an HTML tag? You can affect it. Any one of them. Any one of them. So let's take a look at the first example. And th this is the first type of cascading style sheet. It's called the inline. So you have an HTML page with a header part and a body. The body has two paragraphs, actually three paragraphs. This is the first paragraph. This text does not have any style applied to it. This is the second paragraph. It says this text has the font size style applied to it. And then there's a third paragraph that says this has the text font size and the color. So if we were to render it, and I'm going to open it with the web browser, this is what it will look like. First paragraph, second paragraph, third paragraph. Notice that they all are paragraphs, but they have this different look and feel, right? How did you accomplish that? Well, the first one is the default. It's a P tag. It will default to whatever the browser's default is for a for a P tag. But the second one has a property called style. And this style will have the same syntax that we just looked at in the example in W3 schools, which is a string that has name, column, value pair. The last one doesn't have to have the semicolon, but 
I suggest, you know, that you always do, just in case. In this case, there's only one. What is it? Font size, 20 points. That's the only difference between the first paragraph and this paragraph, and you can see it here. This is the normal one, this is the 20 point one. Okay? Next, this one has more than one style. In fact, the style property is a string that contains font size 20 and color blue. Okay? So when you render it, this is what it's going to look like. Okay? Inline styles will only affect the tag where you put the style at. Got it? Let's see the other type of style. It's called the embedded style. The embedded style is the very similar to the one that we just saw in W3 School sample. Basically what you do is you take all these styles and group them together and put them in a style tag in the header of the page. So now you can say, huh, all my H1s will have this font family in this color. And all my paragraphs in this page will have this font size and this font family. And all my dot special? What is a dot special? Do we have a tag in HTML called dot special? No. So what is this? It's a special style. In fact, we call it a class. Suppose that you want to have H1s and Ps and anchors to have this style, which is color green and font size 10 points. What, what you can do is you can name that style, and in this case we name it special. We could have named it whatever, Joe, whatever. Okay? And then where you want that style to be applied, you just put the attribute class equals special. And that tag, whatever that tag is, an anchor, a P, a heading, will take that style. Okay? So in this case, what we're saying is any tag dot whose class is special will take over this style. He will present it with green, 10 points. So if you go into the body, you see that H1, this H1 is class special. But wait a minute. I just said that H1, or all H1s in this page, are going to be dark blue. So what's going to happen there? It will override. Correct. The dot whatever will override the tag style. Now something to think about. If you want a tag, specific tag in your page, to override any style embedded and later on when we're going to see the external one, you just put an inline. So inline has precedence over embedded. This is embedded in the page. Got it? Let's see how this is rendered. I'm going to open it with the web browser. 
Okay. Notice that Ditel Associates Inc. is in green, right? And sometimes this can come can get really confusing. Why is it green? Because its class is special and special says should be green. And the font size ten. Okay, that's why it's small. Right? But then the next one is a paragraph. And the paragraph said it should be twenty points. Oh wait a minute, but I have a paragraph that is also special, so it will be green and ten points. But inside that paragraph, I have an EM. You HTML experts, can anybody tell me what an EM is? Please read all the HTML tags, because you're going to need them. EM stands for emphasize. When you want to emphasize something, you just put it between the EM tags. But I'm just telling you that EM should be color black. And in fact, it should be also font. Oh, I can't remember the name of the um, style attribute. No problem. I'll just say font control space, and it will give you all the options. It should be font weight, and I can't remember the values for that. Yes, bold. That's what I wanted. Okay, save it, and then you refresh. Now notice that Fortune 1000 companies, which was the emphasize, now it's bold. Within the same paragraph, which the paragraph had a green, but this one has a black. Now sometimes it's confusing because you don't really know which of all the styles is taken into play. So remember what I said. Please try to use your uh, try to develop your website in Firefox and download Firefox so that you can actually see what's going on. Firebug is a really good tool to actually see what takes precedence over one in the styles. So if you copy that URL, which is the, you know, just a, a link to my embedded.html sample, and put it in Firefox, and then launch Fire, I already had it there, Firebug, you can actually see, inspect this element, you can actually see that this H1 class special, notice here, it says the style being applied to this H1 is dot special, which is color green, font size 10 points. But that, that overrides another style that said all the H1s should be color dark blue and font family that. Now the font family that stay there because he was not overridden by that special. Okay, so you you actually starting to see all these different combinations that you can do. So you can have very specific styles which come from uh, more generic styles from come from more generic styles that come from more global styles. Okay, the idea for you next week is to turn in a homepage that has styles. Styles that will govern the entire look and feel of your website. No matter how many pages you build, it should have sa it should have the same look and feel. And it should be done through styles. Okay? What happens if it's a normal heading? Can I see this? HTML that's CSS? That's the browser's default. Somebody asked me last week, w w what's the default for a heading? I mean, why is it looking like that? A heading, by default, in Firefox is that. Display block, font weight bold, this is the margin bottom, this is the font size. That's a heading one in Firefox, by default. Okay, and you can play around with all the different, you know, 
samples, click on the tag and it will tell you exactly what. Now this tells me that it's a style within embedded HTML. So it's an embedded style. Okay. Now it can get really complicated. And we're going to see our exa um, next example that it's called advanced. Let's just open it in the web browser. Okay, this is our next example. This is an embedded example, also embedded style example. It says all my body tags are going to look like this. And all my a dot no deck, what does that mean? Well, I know that dot no deck means it's a special type, right? No decks must stand for no decoration or something like that. But wait a minute, it's preceded by a, which means it will only govern anchors. So when you say a anchor tag dot no deck, it means that this style is just for anchors. In fact, it's for anchors that have the class no deck. And what about the A column hover? What is that? Well, many tags have actions that you can do to the tag. In fact, you can hover a tag you can click on it, you can press down the key, you can up down, I mean there's a whole bunch, there's a whole list of actions that you can do to a tag. Okay? When you want to specify uh, a specific style to an action of a tag, you do it with the colon. So in this case, for any anchor, when you hover it, you will take color red. Okay? So we have tag with specific classes. Tag with specific actions. What about this one? H1 comma EM. That says all my headings ones and all my EMs will take the creation underline. And you can specify as many tags as you want and, and P's and comma and, 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 and divs comma and EMs and you know you just give it a whole list and if they fall in that group they will take that style. What about this one? UL. That's an order list, right? All alone list will have a margin left of 200 pixels. What about an order list space an order list? What does that mean? It means in an order list within in an order list. So if there's an an order list within an order list, the font size will be 0.8. Same here. If there's an emphasize inside a line item, it will take a font weight of bold and color purple. Let's play around with these values and see what, what it does. As you can see, we have a body with a heading and an order list, right? Some line items. I have another unordered list within that order list, unordered list, with some line items, right? And then I have uh, an AEM inside a P and then an anchor, right? This anchor is of class no deck. It says grocery store. So let's render it. Open it with web browser. This is what it looks like. Let's play around with the margin left. All on order lists will have a uh, 20 pixel, not 200. 20 pixel. What does that do? An order list. An order list. Very 
very close together. What about this grocery store? Can you tell that grocery store is a link? No, Larissa, I don't like to me. You cannot tell that that's a link. Just look at it. In fact, you think that go to the is a link, and it's not a link. And that grocery store is content. In fact, it's a link. How do you accomplish that? Well, remember, we said all anchors of class no deck will have a decoration none. Text decoration none means it will not have any decorations within it. No underlines, no nothing around it. And it will be color black. Okay? But wait a second. When you hover at an anchor, the color will be red. How about that? See how things change dynamically just by applying styles to actions, to specific classes? What about this one? An unordered list within an unordered list, which we have one. It's called the, the breads, right? Should have a 2.8 EM, some kind of measurement. Refresh. An unordered list within an unordered list. Now, that only affected those specific ones. Right? What about, you know, same thing, an emphasize within within the line item. So this emphasize is within this emphasize is within Where is the line item? I can't see it. Is that the one that takes the color purple? Let me see. With mushrooms, yeah. Oh no, it's this one, I'm sorry. This emphasize within this line item See this? This emphasize within this line item will take the color purple. And that's how you see with mushrooms purple. And you get the point, right? So you can play around with this stuff as much as you can. Um, okay. Now, let's go and check out the third type of Kiskini Starship, which, which is the external one. So once you have your home page and you have all your styles organized on your header, then you create a second page and you copy the same styles and the header because you want them to look the same. You have the same look and feel. And you start noticing, I'm copying all these styles over and over again. Why not just copy them into an external file and then reference that external file from all the pages in the website so they all have the same look and feel. And in fact, it's not only for, it's not only to, um, for convenience but also because for maintainability. If you want to change the look and feel of your website, you don't have to go through each individual page and change it, but you only have to, to go to the CSS external file. So basically what we do now is we create this page and instead of having in the header part, instead of having the this is the style and you put all these styles, what you do is you have a link. The link tag will have an href to the name of the file where there are your styles where it has the styles. So if you go into styles.css within the styles folder, styles.css within the styles folder, guess what? 
the same body, A, no decoration, A, hover, all that stuff that I put in the header part, they're right here. Right here. That's the only piece that you have to copy. Don't copy the style tag, just the content of the style tag. Okay, and then in the page where you want to use it, you just create a link to it, and the link is link tag href pointing to the CSS file. Now make sure that the relation is a style sheet and that the type is text CSS. That's always the same. Okay? Any questions? With mushrooms, with mushrooms, let me see, let's render the external one, okay? With mushrooms is underlined in purple, right? Let's open it in Firebug and let's analyze it, inspect this element and we find out that the color purple is because the embedded inside an, a line item should be color purple, right? The font weight is bold, okay? And then look at this. Remember I said all the H1s and all the Ms should be text aligned right and should have a, tec a text decoration of underline. So just this one EM, look at all the decorations that it has. And now, notice that it tells me it's no longer the page that has that embedded style. It's a file that you created called styles.css. In fact, you can go ahead and find it in line 7 of that file. You will find that style. Okay? So this is the one that takes precedence over this one, which they don't override each other, right? So that EM is a combination of two styles, right there. And then there's some things that come from the system default. And you want to see something neat? You can actually live change it. Right there. And you say, you know what? I liked it. Copy. Put it in your style.css. Done. Automatic feedback. Okay. All right. Let's move on with more samples. Positioning. And this is something that is going to be very key when you start doing your menus. By the way, you, the home page now that you guys have uh, created for tonight, you're going to have to rebuild it for next week. So that includes the top menu using dynamic submenus using styles. So you're going to be able to pop menus and sub-menus within those menus just using cascade and style sheets. And we're going to see an example of that in a few minutes. So, let's do the open with web browser of positioning example. Look at this. Oh, wait a minute. I have a dead link here. What, uh... Oh, it's expecting it under web content BGIMG. It's not there. And I suggest you do the same thing with all your um, source links to images. Make sure that you have all your images under a folder called images. Don't put a front slash in front of the images because what you're telling the page, the positioning HTML page, is that 
under you there should be a folder called images under which there should be an image called bgimg.gif and that's not true images is relative to the page positioning and in fact there should be under the same folder where you are positioning there should be a folder called images there you go here it is images okay and there should be an image called bgimg gif so make sure you you do that with all your source links so now let's save it and let's refresh it here it is so notice that we have two images here we have the BGIMG and the uh, FGIMG I guess it's background and foreground image right and we also have some position text now we're just taking these images each one on its own paragraph right within its own P but the one image is of BG image or background image class so you will take this style the other one is of the foreground image and the other one is of the dot text each one has its own class the background image has a Z index of 1 the foreground image an index of 2 and as you increment it it will start getting closer and closer to your face and as you start decreasing it it will get further away and then the text is 3 that's how you accomplish something like this now what happens if we do the opposite one two and three save it and refresh notice how the foreground image it's all on top, right? The text is all the way on the back. It's hiding behind the image. That's not the effect that you want. Right? Now, I should have I should have shown you or get you familiarized with the images. This is the background image. Sorry, I should have done that. This is the background image, and this is the foreground image. Okay. All right, not only that, but you can also tell it specifically at what position you want them to show up. So the background image, you want it top zero pixels from the top and zero pixels from the left so the background image is going to be right there in this corner this is all the and you know what you can see this better in Firefox this is the Firebug okay so let's see that it's uh, zero pixels from the top and zero pixels from the left. Okay. What about the foreground image? The foreground is 25 pixels from the top and 10, 100 pixels from the left. So, where is that image? The foreground image. You know what? It cannot find the foreground image. Fail to load. Oh, what happened here? Oh, I'm sorry. See, this is what happens when you do not put the right <laughs> path. Right? Yes. Yes, you're right. So it's good to start looking at it in, uh, uh, quick and dirty but the end
product should be looked at from Firefox. Yes. Good point. Here it is. So now we can see this foreground image. The foreground image, as you can see, is 25 pixels from the top and 100 pixels from the left. That's how it looks like it's displaced a little, right? Now remember, you can play around with this stuff. So you can go ahead and say, let me see if I can move it a little bit closer, further away, okay? And you can do that live. Or up and down. You get the point. And then the text. The text is position at left 111. I'm oh, sorry, wrong one. Left is 100. So you can displace it a little. Okay? And that's position absolute. So it's absolute from the web browser's origin. Top left hand corner. It's not the only position. You have also fixed position, inherited position, static position, relative position, etc., etc. Okay? And obviously they all have different effects on where you place these things on the web page. Any questions? Okay, so keep in mind the Z index. Because that's how, you know, the higher the Z index, the closer it is to your face, the lower, the further away. And things will override each other. Um, next example positioning two. And this is probably what I've been looking for. Positioning two. Let's open it with the web browser. Notice that we're displaying text that says it's in superscript, it's in subscript, shift to left, shift to right. I mean, can you actually see the shift to the left or to the right? That's done by just putting a relative position. So let's see. We have the is in superscript. Is in superscript. Notice that we're not using the SUP tag. Remember, superscript is the SUP tag so that it will show stuff. Maybe I want to do my own superscript. So what I do is I put the content inside a span. And you guys are experts in HTML, right? You know what a span is. And the span tag, whose class is super. And you define your own look and feel of a superscript. In fact, the class super says it's position relative, and from the top is minus 1 ex. So it will, whatever position you are in, you will shift 1 up. Right? Subscript from the bottom 1x. Shift left from the left minus 1x. So let's play around with these values. Um, let's play minus 2, minus 2, minus 2. Save it. Ooh. Maybe that's a little bit too much. Maybe for the superscript and the subscript it's good, but for the shift left, it's just too much. Okay. So what happens see if we get rid of the sign? <laughs> the opposite, right? Of course, expected that. <laughs> All right. 
questions? Let's move on. Let's go on to the next example, which is background. In background, uh, it's really interesting because sometimes this is how you accomplish the whole website to have this background image. Then you say, oh, that is really cool because you can have that image on your borders and you superimpose other stuff, that which is your content. But you still see around your, your website that image. Well, that's accomplished through a background image, right? In your body tag. And you could have done this at the body tag, obviously, but you want to be able to do it all across your website, so you do it in a style. In this case, it's done in an embedded style, right? And what you do is you specify the image, which is wrong. The URL is images slash logo. So let's run, let's render this. Ew. Not good, not good. <laughs> What did I change here? I can't remember what I changed. But it looks ugly. Yeah, probably. Um, and this is going back to the fact... No, it, it's rendered the same in <laughs> Firefox. <laughs> okay. Okay, so, yeah, I probably have to put the, let's put a semicolon here, and then put a background, repeat, right, and no repeat, and then, let's, there you go, let's, let's get in there. Okay, and then the the paragraph. To place the logo in the bottom right corner of the page, notice how the logo stays in the proper position when you resize the browser window. Well, I guess we'll have to resize the browser window. Mm, not really. <laughs> now we're we're. We're missing another style here. Um, class dark is die tail. Okay, so that's dark. in the position um, styles for this thing because it's supposed to be in the bottom of the right corner of the page right and the logo stays in the proper position when you resize the browser the background color fills in where there's no image where's the background color so the background color is I don't know, let's call it dark blue so refresh Oh, I see. And it's probably the image is fixed, but the paragraph should not be fixed. background color image position I think we're missing top left right it was bottom right I'm sorry This paragraph style? What about it? No, remember, this is the... Oh, I see what you're saying. 
No, in this case, background position is in regards to the background of the body, which it's really just that logo, right? So when you refresh, there you go. So you're supposed to be able to refresh, um, resize, and that image will always stay on the bottom. Now I guess there must be a combination of bottom right, right? Bottom. I didn't see any. <laughs> it was just bottom. Bottom right. Nope. <laughs> Maybe it's uh, bottom and then right. <laughs> I'm not even sure. There's so many different combinations that you can do. Uh, notice that it took the right took precedence, probably because you're overwriting it from the bottom. Oh, there's no dash. Okay, okay. Now, how come... How come... This guy didn't tell me that that was one of the options? So, there's something going on with this IntelliSense. See that? So, it's bottom right. Is that what you're saying? Oh. Right. Space. Oh, okay. All right. I, th I thought there was a special kind of. Okay. There you go. Good. So no matter how you resize the page, it always stays on the bottom right. Okay. Let's move on. Next example. Let's play around with widths. This is pretty cool. Um. Sometimes you have a very reduced space in your in your web page, and you want to be able to display as much content as you can. Um, you know, either because you don't have that many um, vertical space or any horizontal space, so you're limited as to what you can show and how you can show it. So notice that we have divs, and can any HTML expert, tell me what a div is. Very important HTML tag. So division. So you pretty much take a piece of the page real estate. Okay. And whatever content you put within that div, that division, um, it will take precedence on the style. So what you're saying here is all the divs in this page will have the following color. Let's call it green. And the margin button and the font. But notice that each individual div has its own inline style. This one has a width of 20%. This one has a width of 80%. And this one has a width of 20% and a height, a specific height. And it says, in the overflow, scroll. So, this is what you get. This one is what? It's only 20% of the width of what? Of where the div is. So, if the div is inside the body, it will be 20% of the body. So, if you measure this up, Inside here, right? I don't like having it inside here. So if you measure this width over here, this is 20%. Got it? Now, 
this one is 80% and it's centered. So all the content is centered. Notice that the same amount of space that is here is the same amount that is here. Okay? So it's centered within the div. And it's width, it's 80%. 80% of what? Of the body. Why? Because it's inside the body. If it were inside another div, which was inside another div, which, which was inside a TD of a table, it will be that space. And this one is 20%. Must be 150 pixels height. So it cannot go further than 150 pixels. And if the content goes beyond the 150 pixels, then I want you to, and it's called the overflow, I want you to show in a scroll. And it will be the same case for horizontal scroll or vertical scroll. Okay. Okay. Yeah, let's take a break. Let's take a break and we'll come back. It's 702? 703. Let's come back at 715, please.